نستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد او بريز دو تو الله وي لورد هيم بسيتش يور سيلف ان هيم وي سيك فورجيفنس and we seek the refuge of Allah from the mischievousness of our souls and the wrong doings of all of our actions whoever Allah guides no one can lead him astray and whoever Allah leaves to be left astray no one will be able to guide him and i bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship as a deity except Allah he is alone he has no partners and i bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his abd and his rasul his slave and his messenger as to what follows surely the best speech is the book of Allah and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad and the worst of all affairs are newly invented matters in this deen for surely every newly invented matter in this deen is a cursed innovation and every accursed innovation is a going astray and every astray is in the hellfire we know brothers and sisters in Islam that everything has a purpose everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a purpose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the human beings and the jinn for the purpose of worshiping them worshiping him as he says wa ma khalaqtul jinna wal insa illa liya'budun i have not created the human beings or the jinn i have not created the jinn kind or the human kind except to worship me and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the heavenly bodies to give us guidance so that we may be able to go through the forests and through the deserts and beyond land and sea and find our way be it in Allah by his permission and we know that he also created the heavens those heavenly bodies as a means of beautification for the skies and also for rujum al shayateen to repel the jinn when they try to eavesdrop on those angels that hear some of the privy some of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows them to know of the future and we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created flies to pest and bother you and this is the reason why the arab call flies zubab because the word zubab comes from the verb zabba which means to push away and it comes back to push away and to come back to push away and to come back so the fly one of the reasons for its creation one of the purposes is to bother and pest you the purpose of the creation of the dunya is trials and tribulations that's it this dunya was created for trials and tribulations and we undoubtedly unescapable it is inescapable that we are going to be tried and tested every single day we say at least 17 times a day in our salah whether that salah is a fard salah or a sunnah salah or a nafila whether it's obligatory superobligatory or optional at least 17 times in a day and night we say ihdina sirat wal mustaqim o our lord guide us to the straight way to the straight path sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim the path upon whom you allah has given his ni'mah and in this ayah 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us, commanding us, not as a suggestion, it is a commandment on us to beg his guidance and put us on the path of those whom he has given his ni'mah. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين not the path of the Jews whom the Prophet explained were غير المغضوب عليهم nor the Christians ولا الضالون in this ayah in Al-Fatiha we are begging Allah to be with those people whom he has bestowed his grace and his bounty and his felicity his gift and as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that ayah in another ayah, وَمَنْ يُتِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَمْعَنَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِّينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ حَسُنَا رَفِيقًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in explaining that ayah in Surah Al-Fatiha, in this ayah in Surah Al-Nisa, whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, and the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they will be with those whom Allah has sent down His Ni'mah from among the Prophets and the Siddiqeen, the extremely truthful, trustworthy people, with Shuhada and the Martyrs and the Scholars, with Salihin and the Righteous. What a beautiful, wonderful, tremendously handsome company they are. So every day, at least 17 times a day, we are begging Allah to put us on the path of the prophets and those like the prophets. But unbeknownst to many of us, being unaware of what we're begging for, when we're begging Allah to put us on the path of those and I'm ta'alayh, we're also asking Allah to battle with ta'ala to give us the trials and tribulations like they had. For the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, Ayyunnas ashadu bala? Which of the people and prophets are people? They're not angels, they're not jinn. Which of the people are the most tried and tested? The Prophet said, Al Ambiya'u, Al Ambiya'u, the Prophet, Thumm al Amthal, Fal Amthal, Thumm al Amthal, Fal Amthal. Then those who are like them, then those who are like them. So every day you're asking Allah to try and test you. So when the test and the trial comes, why do you complain? Why aren't you thankful? Why don't you have sabr, patience? Why do you just like the trial and the tribulation when every day you ask Allah to put you on the path of those who receive the most tremendous of trials and tribulations. It is a contradiction in your worship. It is a contradiction in your aqidah. It is a contradiction in opposition to the way of the believers who are the most patient and the most thankful to Allah for the test and the trial that they receive. And then the prophets in this same hadith, after telling us about the prophets and those like them and those like them, he said, Yubtala rajulu ala hafi dinihi وَإِن كَانَ فِي دِينِهِ صُلْبًا اشْتَدَّ بَلَاؤُهُ Then the person, the male Muslim, the female Muslim, they will be tried and tested according to the degree of their deen. And if they have strength and firmness in their deen, if they're a strong Muslim man or strong Muslim woman, when the test comes to them, if they're strong, the Prophet ﷺ says, Then the test becomes even stronger. The test becomes even more severe. More stronger, more severe. Listen to these beautiful words of the Prophet ﷺ. This is what we're asking for every single day. Every day. We're asking Allah Taala to try and test us. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned the case of the other people. Ubtuniya, this man, when he's tested according to his deen, and if his deen is weak, 
if he has a smaller level than the strong person, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test him according to his deen. فَمَا يَبْرَحُ الْبَلَاءُ بِالْعَبْدِ حَتَّى يُدْرَكَهُ يَمْشِي عَلَى الْعَرْضِ وَمَا عَلَيْهِ خَطِيئَةً Then Allah will continue to, to give calamity and misfortune and mishap, poverty, all types of trials to that person until he walks on the earth being totally sinless. Allah will keep trying him and testing him and afflicting him until he walks on the earth and all his sins have been forgiven. Brothers and sisters in Islam, this is a ni'mah from Allah that we're tried and tested with calamity. This is a blessing and a bounty from Allah that we are tested every single day, hour, minute of our lives. We should thank Allah Ta'ala for these trials and these tests. We should be patient during the test. Because if we're patient during the trial, you just got the test back, and the test says you're positive, HIV. You just found out that your daughter has leukemia. You just found out that your son in a few months, by the permission of Allah, is going to be totally blind. You're a young woman, and you marry this man. And the man, after five weeks, he commits adultery, and he admits it. He admits that he committed the adultery. And you were a virgin when you married him. And now you have to get a khura. You have to get a divorce. These are trials and tribulations from Allah subhanahu wa ta And to those people, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّهُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْدُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ أَلَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ أُولَئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ Surely we will try you of fear and hunger and loss of crops and lives and property, but give glad tidings to those who are patient, that when a calamity befalls them, do they want to commit suicide? Do they want to use drugs? Do they go to drinking alcohol? Do they go to gambling? Those who when the trial and tribulation comes to them, the calamity comes to them, they say, we belong to Allah and to Allah we will return. They are the ones who receive salawat from their Lord, forgiveness, warahma, and mercy. And they are the ones who are guided. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has informed us, إِنَّ عِظَمَ الْجَزَاءِ مَعْ عُظْمِ الْبَلَاءِ فَمَنْ رَضِيَ فَلَهُ الرِّضَى وَمَنْ سَقَطَ فَلَهُ السَّخَطِ The Prophet ﷺ in his authentic hadith transmitted by Tirmidhi, he said that surely the reward is proportional to the calamity. Surely the reward is proportional to the misfortune. The size of the reward is in accordance with the calamity. If the person is pleased with the calamity, if the person is pleased with their Lord, with the trial, you went into the building to save your wife, and you come out completely burned. Total, your total body is completely burned from head to toe, totally disfigured. If you're pleased with this, and you thank Allah, Allah will be pleased with you. And if you resent it, and you dislike it, Allah will resent and dislike you. This is the statement of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So those of us who claim to be on this path of Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah, when the test comes to you, when the trial comes to you, when the plague comes to you, when the disease comes to you, Know that Sadaqa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks the truth when he said, Al Masaibu wal Amaradu wal Ahzaun wal Ahzanun jaza. The Prophet alayhi wa sallam said that calamity and diseases and sadness, depression, anxiety, grief, and sorrow 
our reward for the believer. Our reward for the believer, walhamdulillah rabbil alameen. الحمد لله رب العالمين ونصلي ونسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam Allah تبارك وتعالى did not create this dunya in vain this dunya is دار الابتلاء والفتن it is the abode of trials and tribulations but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does these things to you. He does this thing to myself, to all of us, because He loves us. Because sometimes when the Muslim commits a sin, and all of us are khatpa'un, all of us commit sin. And the best of those who sin are those who repent, as, the, as He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when Allah loves you, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهِ إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ الْخَيْرِ لِعَبْدِهِ If Allah desires good for His servant, عَجَّلَ لَهُ الْعُقُوبَ فِي الدُّنْيَا He will hasten and bring quickly to you the punishment in this dunya. That's if He loves you. If He loves you. If He loves you, He'll bring the calamities and the punishment to you in this life. وَإِذَا أَرَادَ بِعَبْدِهِ الشَّرِّ And if he desires for his slave evil, أَمْسَكَ عَنْهُ بِذَنْبِهِ He will postpone, store up his sin and the punishment of his sins for him حَتَّى يُوَافِيَ بِهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ On the day of resurrection. So this is a calamity for the Muslim. It's worse than being in this life because in this life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't punish you. He waits until you go in front of Him on the day of resurrection. And then all of the things that He didn't punish you for in this life, He piles it on your neck, on your back in the neck. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for you, brothers and sisters, you should be thankful to Allah azza wa jal. You should be thankful to Allah. You should say to Allah when you get AIDS, when you get leukemia, when you get asthma, when you get tuberculosis, when you lose your hearing, when you lose your sight, when you lose your legs, when they amputate your feet, when you become a paraplegic, you should be thankful to Allah. You should say, oh Allah, thank you for this, because you're being purified for your sins. But unfortunately, some of us, when the calamity hits, when the disease hits, when the misfortune hits, it makes hypocrisy sprout inside of ourselves. It increases the disease in our heart. We become more arrogant when the calamity and the misfortune is there for you to return to your Lord in repentance, ask His forgiveness, turn away from the creation. As the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophets of old used to do. We know about Ayyub ﷺ, who had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sheep, of camels, of horses, of donkeys, of goats, of all types. He had innumerable children. He had slave girls and slave boys. He had wives, and everyone respected him except the people whom he was sent to. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him with people taunting him, saying he wasn't a prophet saying he really wasn't righteous and he wasn't one of the Abidun. Allah tested him in his physical body, inside of his physical body, taking away from him his family, taking away from him his children, taking away from him his property, his sheep, his camels, his goats, taking away from him his cows, taking away from him all of his money, then afflicting him with a disease, a disease so tremendous that the skin on his body just fell right off his body. To the point where the only one that stuck by him, after his children left him, and his friends left him, and the people of the village left him, the only person that stuck by him was his wife. 
and he was afflicted so much that his own wife couldn't even recognize him. And that one time, not at one time, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he said, Ayyub wa anta arhamur rahimeen. Oh my Lord, you O oh Allah, you are the most merciful of those who have mercy. Not one time did he say, Oh Allah, why are you doing this to me? Not once. His skin came off his body. He lost all his property. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Urkud bi rijlik. Urkud bi rijlik. Stamp with your foot. Meaning walk 40 steps. And then take this water. And make ghusl with it. And then take this water. And drink it. And with that, he became more beautiful than he was before that. To the point where his wife didn't even recognize him. Asking him, do you know where this prophet of Allah is? Who's being tried and afflicted? He said, Ana huwa. It's me. And then she knew who it was. She knew who it was after Allah lifted the affliction. As Allah says, فَاسْتَجَبَنَا لَهُ فَكَفَشْنَا مَا بِهِ مِنْ ضُرُّ وَأَتَيْنَاهُ أَهْلَهُ وَمِثْلَهُمْ وَمِثْلَهُمْ مِنْ مِنْهُمْ رَحْمَةً مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ مِنْ عِنْدِنَا لِذِكْرِ لِلْعَالَمِينَ لِذِكْرِ لِلْعَابِدِينَ That Allah says, and we answered his dua, and we removed the calamity from him, we gave him back his family, and more than he had before the affliction. And those who ran away from him, we gave him back more friends, more respected followers than before the affliction. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends this verse by saying, this is a reminder for those who are true worshipers. This is a reminder for those who are true worshipers of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters in Islam, when the trial comes to you, Remember that you ask for it every single day, at least 17 times a day. You ask Allah to put you on the path of the prophets and nabiyyin wa siddiqeen wa shuhada wa salihin. Don't regret the trial and the tribulation. The dunya is only a place of trials and tribulations. It is inevitable. Thank Allah and be patient in it and ask for Allah's well-being. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you be with those whom you beg Allah to be with every day. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina adab al nar. Rabbana la tuakhidna in nasina au akhtana. Rabbana wa la tahmil alayna isran kama hamaltuhu ala alladhina min qablina. Rabbana wa la tuhamilna ma la taqata lana bih. Wa'afu anna wa ghfir lana wa rhamna. Anta maulana fansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. ربنا أفرغ علينا صبرا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحابه أجمعين